Hi, this is Edward Mendoza, and today we're going to cover how difficult it's going to be for you to get into the OMS CS program. Chronos Matrix, focus on what matters most. Visually keep your goals in check and create new goals so you can stay on schedule. Watch your daily, weekly, and monthly results to stay focused. Free time optimization app. Hi, right, welcome back. And first off, I just wanna say I'm not an official Georgia Tech administrator. Your mileage may completely vary from mine. This has only been my personal experience, an experience from people that I've met and several others that I've heard commenting on how difficult or how easy it was for them to get in. Now, the first thing I wanted to mention, if you go to the Georgia Tech website, you can see that they don't require the GRE. Now, that alone makes it much easier to get in for, um, for various reasons. It's, it's a rather difficult test. And um, some schools, if you don't have the GRE, if, you just won't be able to get in. So with Georgia Tech, if you're trying to get onto their, uh, their campus, if you're trying to go to the physical school, the university for the, for the same degree, right? For the same masters. They actually do require you to, uh, to get the, the GRE. So spending on the university, most of them actually would require you to have the GRE. Now that's not to say it would have to be a really high score on the individual parts of the GRE, but it makes it extremely easy for you to just fill out the application and send it in um, compared to having, having to finish the GRE before submission. The other thing that I find very interesting is I've met a lot of people that don't even have a programming background, right? So in my case, my degree was in art. I studied visual effects and graphic arts um, as my undergraduate. So since I knew I was going to be heroically unprepared for this type of um, this type of graduate degree, I actually spent three years taking all the classes that I would have taken had I gone to the actual um, university for a bachelor's in computer science. So I saw what curriculum they had, I saw all the classes that I would need, and then I did see what the recommended courses uh, for Georgia Tech were. So of course you need discrete structures, which I talk about all the time. Um, you need your math up to linear algebra. You don't really need uh, differential equations, but I mean, just depends on, on uh, what's going to be your, your path later on. Uh, you might want to take uh, differential equations, but in general, most universities for, for uh, graduate programs will ask you for at least up to uh, linear algebra, which then includes, you know, calculus and all, all the math that, that's going to come uh, before that. So, and discrete structures, even though it is technically discrete mathematics, since it's embedded within the, um, the computer science foundations, it's it's a, to me, I consider it much easier than just going straight math because, you know, we're so application based kind of thinkers that learning that process of math and seeing how directly it connects with, um, with computation really helped me understand so many of the things. I mean, every semester that I've, I've taken a class here in, in Georgia Tech, there's always some piece, some equation, something that I'll see that immediately just takes me back to uh, either discrete structures or, or data structures. Those two, it's best to just have them down. So th those are classes just like linear algebra, uh, algebra. If you can take those three over and over again until you ace it, I highly recommend it because that's going to really, really prepare you for this. Um, I was lucky uh, in data structures. I ended up taking the, um, the beginners and then a, a more advanced course in uh, data structures. But even before the, the first time I, I got into data structures, I audited um, a semester of data structures. So I technically almost had like three semesters worth of, of content that I was reviewing and, and, and understanding. And that really, really helps me. Again, I know everybody's trying to get, you know, their degrees as fast as possible, but those core elements, linear algebra, data structures, and discrete structures, they're so vital for everything you're going to do in any area of computer science that if you're serious about this field, you kind of really do have to have a solid understanding. And even if you don't, once you get into, you know, OMS, CS, they're going to force you to review the same material anyway. So you might as well be prepared before going in. It'll make everything so much smoother. So anyway, back to getting into the school, um, other than those, uh, those courses, and obviously, um, you know, all the math that, that entails with it, the more preparation you have and the more that you can show that you're already part of 
you know, the, the industry that would definitely help. Now I've met people that they either had a very strong math background, but absolutely not like not even taking a programming course. They had it difficult the first couple of semesters, but since they already had a lot of the elements in, in the uh, math courses that they took, it's like they, their preparation wasn't as bad. The people I've seen really struggling are people like in my situation, but that didn't spend the three years to like prepare for, for the OMSES. And those are the ones that usually end up dropping. So even though you might get accepted without having strong uh, um, computer science skills already, it's I'd, I would recommend to you know prepare for it anyway. And then that highly increases your chances of getting in. Um, some students, I'm not really sure how they're really evaluating who deserves to get in or not, because at the same light, I've seen other um, students getting rejected their first time around, um, even though they had a, you know, a, a bachelor's in computer science. So I'm pretty sure maybe they're looking more at the, uh, at your long-term focus. What is that you're trying to do, right? So when you're doing that letter of recommendation, you know, all, all these little pieces of, of getting into any university really um, are, are gonna be really important. But as far as that preparation and knowing that even if you get accepted, you're not gonna waste you know, time and money trying to catch up to speed. It's best if you already either you know, have the bachelor's in computer science, already have several years of uh, programming experience as far as work goes, or in, a, in, in any event, at least willing to put in the time and effort and go at it um, through the long haul. I, I think what probably hurts a lot of people is that they're thinking this will be a quick two-year degree, I'll go in and go out, and then they don't even have the experience. It's like if you've already put in 10 years as a programmer um, at any company and then go into OMS, yes, you'll, it'll, it's not gonna be easy, but it's like you're, you're not gonna have a tough time getting through the program. But if you don't have any one of those, if you don't have the experience already, if you haven't had the degree or spent you know, the time taking the courses on your own, I mean, you're, you're, it's, you're in for a world of pain. <laughs> Let me just say it that way. But uh, not that you can't learn it. And that's also one of the benefits of the program. It's like you're not in any rush. You can take up to six years to finish this degree. So even people that aren't ready, I think it's like, well, if you, if you want to go for it and you, you're up for a real challenge, it's, um, you're going you're gonna to have to put in the time if you want to get through it. But either way, I'd say it's just like you, you still have kind of a high chance, depending on where you're at with your goals, um, to still get accepted. So it doesn't necessarily um, take away your chances if you don't already have a strong background. But most people that I've met in the program already had either they had the work history, they've been teaching, they've, they, they have already a background. It, it actually really was the anomalies. It was kind of few um, students that I met that really didn't have any background at all and still got accepted in the program. So I guess it's like any regular university. There's some people that you totally understand, you know, why they're there. Other people you're thinking, you know, you don't really need to be studying this. You should just be out there working. And then others that you're thinking like, they're just not, you know, they're not ready for this kind of, uh, for this kind of intensity in the program. So, so anyway, those are my recommendations as far as, you know, preparations to get in. Um, everything else, obviously, the more work, the more effort you put in, the um, better letters of recommendation you get, um, the better grades you have on transcripts as, as far as the key um, courses that you need. All that's gonna help, but I mean, anyone who just wants to get a computer science degree because they think it's, oh, it'll be a great way of, of making money and it's like an easy job and you know, I just need a degree to help me out. It's like, this is not the, <laughs> this is not the program I recommend uh, to get in there. There'll probably be other universities that are very easy and this is definitely not one of them. So I recommend uh, OMSCS for people that are already serious, that already put in the time and the effort, or are willing to put in the six, you know, the six years long-term to really get solid in this particular industry. Anyway, hope those tips um, have helped. Let me know in the comments if there's other aspects of uh, OMSCS that you guys would like to know about and uh, if I have the information can help you out.